Hello, Sparky Peter Liverpool in the International Test Centre, which doubles as my mum's garage. And I'm going to take you through uh, testing for continuity of protective conductors on this three-phase distribution board. And the first thing to emphasise is that it's a dead test. And as you can see there, we've got our uh, three-phase distribution board safely isolated. I mean, at the uh, back of our minds all the time is uh, health and safety and we realised that before we even get to this point that it, there might have been a number of procedures that we've gone through including things like risk assessment, uh, method statements, permit to work, that sort of thing to even get to this point. Anyway, it's a dead test and the board has been safely isolated. If I take you through to look at the meter that I'm going to use, this is, it's our multifunction tester and I'm going to use the low resistance ohms function on the meter, always uh, write in exams to get your terminology correct. So if I first of all just null the test leads, there we go. And you can see the way I've got this set up. Well, first of all, let's talk about the bonding. I've got the bonding disconnected here to avoid any parallel paths. Um, in reality, if we can observe the bonding throughout its length, we wouldn't necessarily do uh, a continuity protective conductors test. But if that bonding disappears into a building void or there's any, any uncertainty uh, in any way the, about the fact that it's continuous, we would assess that with uh, our R2 wonder lead. I'll show you that in another clip. Um, for the test on this particular board, as you can see there, I've got the line conductor of the first circuit to be tested connected through that temporary link to the main earthing terminal and as I was putting that in I thought it's a good idea it's read that because it'll emphasize the fact that uh, we need to take that out when we've conducted the test. Now the circuit being tested there is this single phase distribution board over on the other side and having made that connection that I've just shown you if I test between the earth and the line conductor on this board and I'm getting, even though you can't see it, a value of zero on the meter. Now I can show you that. There we go. So on that particular circuit, the R1, R2 value is zero before it disappeared onto grid 999 again. Now I'm just gonna set up this next circuit in the same way. And the circuit we're gonna be testing next is a little pyro circuit, MICC, up to a fuse connection unit that's just above our head. So again, I'm going to make this temporary connection between the line conductor and the main earthing terminal. And for this one, I'm going to go up the ladder a little bit and you'll see there, hopefully, our fused connection unit. And on there, if I go between the earth and the line conductor, I'm getting a value of, let's jump around a little bit and try for a more consistent reading. Zero again. Now, I don't know whether you can see that, but I'll show you properly. So there we go. That was the value for that circuit. So that's the R1, R2 value for that circuit. Now, of course, when we do those tests, um, we get a few things out of it. We get the R1, R2 value. Um, that, and it also confirms, obviously, the continuity of the protective conductor, which is the stated aim of the test. And we also get polarity as well, because if line and neutral were reversed, we get open circuit there. So there we go. Let's move on to this three-phase circuit. And if I go to the L1, and again, make that temporary connection. And then for this one, I've got to go up the ladder a little bit. Hopefully you can see in there. I'm going to go between the uh, little earth tail of the banjo and go between there and L1, the brown. I'm getting zero. Again, I'll come down, I'll show you that on the meter. So there we go. So that, that circuit as well is, we get an R1, R2 value before it disappeared to, often went to greater than 999 of zero. Now what we do with that circuit is we repeat that for L2, 
and L3. And then we take the highest of those values and that would be, I mean, they should be all the same really, but we'll take the highest of those values and that would be the R1, R2 value for that particular circuit. Now, the other thing to realize about a three phase circuit is if we confirm, if we're talking about different distribution boards and we confirm that L1 from board one goes to L1 of board two and L1 of board three and L2 and L3 the same, then actually what we've confirmed is phase rotation as well. There's no actual need to run out and buy a, a phase rotation meter in those circumstances. Um, so there we go. Um, continuity of protective conductors, R1, R2 testing. We've discussed the fact that it's a, uh, it's a dead test. I've talked about the bonding and the fact that we've disconnected that to avoid any parallel paths. And I've talked about the verification of that, uh, which I'll show you in another clip. And then we've also looked at um, the uh, testing for continuity protective conductors and the fact that we get polarity and an R1, R2 value that we can use to calculate ZS if we need to. We get that as a, a free, if you like, from that one test. So there we go. Any constructive criticism, always welcome, because nobody knows everything and there's always more to say.